It's August, it's hot. You might think the garden, it's over, it's done. There's no time to plant anything. You couldn't be further from the truth. I'm here in the greenhouse starting some stuff for August. And in this video, we're gonna give you not only my perspective, but Jacques and two special gardeners, Dagny and Meg, who grow in different areas. You guys have been asking us for colder climate, warmer climate recommendations from around the country. So in this video, we're giving you 12 things you can still plant in August. So get out your seeds and let's get growing. My first selection isn't this 20 pound sunflower head that I literally smashed my head into, but in fact, the plant that was growing in this bed that I've had some struggles with in my life. Sometimes it's a little bit stringy. Sometimes it's a little bit salty. Sometimes it's a little bit dry, but I think I finally figured out how to grow it in my climate. And that plant, of course, is celery. If you've struggled to grow celery like I have, I've also struggled to grow things like broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, and it all stems from not knowing the right time to get the plant in the ground. The variety I have for you guys is called Utah. It's a very, very classic celery variety. It's about 100, 120 days or so, and you might be thinking, that's kind of a long time if you're starting in August. That's why this is my warmer zone pick, because it's gonna take two or three weeks to germinate, get it in the ground, and the reason why it works right now for us in higher zones is because it wants a consistently mild temperature, which I just personally do not get in the summer. So what I would be doing here is not direct sowing it. So the seeds are actually quite small. I do about three per cell, start those, it'd take about two or three weeks to germinate, then I'd transplant that into the ground, grow it into my mild fall and winter, keep it well watered, and you'll avoid all the common problems that happen with celery where it's too stringy, it has sort of gaps in the actual stalks themselves, or it just, quite frankly, bolts and doesn't grow that well. Many people grew up absolutely hating this vegetable only to learn that you just have to cook it the right way to love it, but it's still an extremely challenging one to grow, and that is Brussels sprouts. Here I have the Long Island improved variety, and the tricky thing with Brussels sprouts is that they take a very long time to grow and produce. So when you're looking for a variety, you wanna look for one that has something like 85 to 110 days, which is what this one has. There are varieties that even go up to like 200 days. And the reason why you wanna plant it in August is because if you think about it, especially if you're somewhere like zone 10B or even maybe eight plus, it gets really hot in early spring. So what you wanna do actually is start your Brussels sprouts at the end of summer have them growing in the garden by fall so that by the time you get into springtime, you'll have tons of Brussels sprouts starting to form and then they won't get too hot and covered in aphids and turn to trash. So right now is the best time to start Brussels and actually all of your brassicas. I even have my first round right here. Tender green mustard is also called mustard spinach, but even though it's not actually related to mustard or spinach, it has some of the best characteristics of both. So let's get into why I think this plant is a must grow for your fall garden. First of all, tender green mustard, it's part of the chicory family. It's a really productive and easy to grow plant and it's going to give you a harvest really fast. It's fast to mature so you'll be picking this in just under three weeks but most importantly for me this one's really cold hardy. In fact it prefers cooler temperatures and can survive down into the 30s which here in zone 6b as we're planting for the fall it's super important that I'm being mindful of the fact that we're going to be getting these cooler nights soon if I want to continue to have dark leafy greens all fall and winter long. Now, this one is pretty sensitive to transplant stress that can cause it to bolt. So we're going to want to direct sow this directly into the ground when the soil temperatures are still between about 60 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can just do three seeds about every four to six inches and then we'll thin that down to one seed every four to six inches once they come up. But soon enough, you're gonna have a bushy plant that's packed with nutrients and ready for fall. My next pick is one that I actually hated as a child and some people genetically hate. I believe some people just think it tastes like dirt based on the way that their DNA works. It's kind of like the whole cilantro and soap thing, but it's a plant that is extremely rewarding, very simple to grow, and honestly, one of the more satisfying things to pull out of the garden, and that would be beets. Varieties wise, if you want to keep life simple, go with the gourmet blend. But for me, one of my personal favorites for just one cultivar would be golden. I prefer it to the purplish beets like Detroit Dark Red. I really like a golden beet. I find it's a lot sweeter. It's a little bit more palatable for myself, especially growing up as a kid who hated beets. But growing them could not be easier. In fact, beet seeds have a bit of a little special secret in them that you may not be aware of. Beet seeds is more than one seed. It'll sprout maybe two up to four out of the same exact seeds so as a compound seed. So what I'm saying here is when you're spacing out your beets, and I do recommend direct sowing your beets in your bed, you just come in, boom, 
boom, boom, about four inches apart or so, and you only need to put one in each hole. So I'm gonna come in, drop, drop, and drop, keep it well watered. In fact, over at Epic Home Setting, we did one where we just kind of threw them on the ground and dragged a rake over. We had some of the best beets we've ever had. It's a perfect time to plant them right about now in early August. Actually, in many zones, I would say, perhaps even down to about zone six, seven or so, you can get a nice harvest because beets are quite frost tolerant and the cold will make them taste even sweeter. Carrots are perfect to plant in August because they love those cool fall growing conditions. And they're one of my favorite things to plant for fall because they're used in all of the comfort meals like soups and stews and holiday dishes. Two of my favorite varieties to grow are Sheen Kuroda and Danvers 126. And these varieties are really good for the dense clay soil that we have here in North Carolina, especially if you're trying to grow in ground. There are a couple of ways that I like to plant carrots and for both methods, you wanna make sure that you have a nice, loose, loamy soil. If the soil's too dense, it's gonna be hard for those carrots to push through and form nicely. But that's why I like to grow these varieties just in case. Also, if you over fertilize carrots, it can lead to forking and a lot of really crazy root hairs. So it's best to just work in some gentle, organic, slow release fertilizer right before planting. The first way you can plant carrots is to plant them in nice, neat rows. I just divot out a little trench like this, about a fourth of an inch deep, and line the little trench with carrots. And then just very lightly cover. Now another method is what I like to call planting chaos carrots. I put some carrot seeds in this pepper shaker, and I just gently shake them all throughout the planting area. And then I just take this little rake and lightly rake them through, gently covering them with soil. It can take carrots up to three weeks to germinate, so you just wanna make sure that you're keeping the soil nice and moist until they start to sprout. In this bowl of water here, I have my seed soaking. And it's a seed that looks kind of familiar, but a little different, and it's actually the humble parsnip. Something that looks like a carrot, grows like a carrot, but is not a carrot. They are actually quite delicious though. And the reason why I'm soaking them is that they can take two weeks plus to actually germinate, and soaking them overnight makes a huge difference. Now the other thing that's important about root crops and parsnips especially is having nice loose soil. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking my cobra head and just kind of disturbing the soil and getting it nice and loose so that I could throw my seed in here. So what I'm going to do is take some of these soaked seeds and just try to kind of flick them onto the soil where I want them. I'm going to over sow because the germination just isn't that good in general. They can take a long time. So it's better to do a little bit extra rather than doing less. Now once they're in the ground, make sure that you get your mulch and cover them up. And the reason why you wanna start these in August is because by the time they're ready in about 120 days, they'll be close to January, which is our coldest month here in San Diego. And that's gonna make them really sweet and delicious instead of kind of bitter and uninteresting. And the mulch is gonna help lock in the moisture to help improve that germination even more. One variety that I cannot live without is Swiss chard. And I'm growing this ruby red type because I wanted to add some really nice contrast to my garden. Now this is going to be a really large, luscious, deep green leaf like all Swiss chards. And it's going to be really versatile to use in all sorts of cooking. It's gonna mature in about 60 days and reach about 24 inches tall and 18 inches wide. This is a great way to add some contrast and color to your garden and the whole stock is also edible. This plant is great for me in zone 6B because it's known to withstand moderate freezes. So even though we're gonna get temperatures down into the 30s, I'll continue to be able to grow this one. And the way that I'll harvest it is just picking those outside larger leaves and letting the center ones continue to grow. Now you can grow Swiss chard from transplants. A lot of people do. It's just a little bit more dramatic and needs time to harden off. And when you do transplant it out, you're probably going to find that it gets kind of droopy. Just give it a good drink and it should perk right back up. But I like to direct sow mine. So when I direct sow it, I do about two seeds every eight inches or so, and we're gonna plant that about a half an inch deep. Once these germinate, you're gonna wanna thin that down to just one seed per eight inches, and before you know it, you'll have an abundance of Swiss chard. This next plant is one that honestly gets made fun of a lot, especially as you get into late summer. It's one that people recommend ditching at your neighbor's doorstep, but I highly encourage you to give it a second chance. In fact, right down here, I'm growing a version of this plant in this giant pumpkin that you may have seen recently, but I'm not in fact talking about the giant pumpkin version of this plant. I am in fact talking about a winter squash. 
The variety I've chosen for you is the Lakota winter squash, once a staple of the Lakota Sioux people. It is a fantastic storing squash. Winter squash, generally speaking, means you grow it out, you don't harvest it young, you let the skin get nice and hard, and you can actually store it through the winter. It doesn't mean a squash you literally grow in winter, which is a really common misconception. But the way to grow these squash, and it's really quite simple, it's very akin to how you might grow a pumpkin. So take a look down here. If I was to plant my little squash here, I'd mound a little hill up. So let's just pretend I've done that. And what I'll do is you kind of make a little depression in the soil and you want to plant this in a mound. So what that means is take a few, one, two, three, seems good. And then you would cover that up. Now there is one little hack you can do to speed up the germination a little bit. And that would be to come to the pointy end of the squash seed and give it a quick clip right there at the very end. You can see I've just nicked a tiny little bit, but mostly I've just allowed water to get in. That can be a really good tip for end of season squash planting because you want to direct sow it in the ground, but you want it to sprout up really quickly. And believe me, that little nick on the seed coat will let the water get in and it'll germinate a lot faster. So you'll plant about three per mound, you thin it to about one or two per mound, and you just let that thing rip. This is also kind of an interesting time to put squash in the ground because the squash vine borer, which is one of the most common and destructive and annoying pests for squash, really its season has sort of passed. So you won't be worrying about that disease and you'll get a beautiful, nutty, sweet winter squash you can store until next season. Another great fall crop to start in August are radishes. Radishes are absolutely delicious roasted, especially this French breakfast radish. And it can also be used in soups or salads or even on toast. Or my favorite way to use this daikon radish is in homemade kimchi. And if you're someone like me that loves near instant gratification when gardening, you'll love growing these smaller radish varieties because they are ready to harvest in as little as 21 days. Before planting, I like to amend the soil with a gentle organic fertilizer. Like carrots, radishes prefer loose soil to help their roots develop easily. I'm gonna make a little trench about a half an inch in depth. And French breakfast radishes are small, so I'm just gonna drop a seed every one to two inches. For the daikon radishes, I'm gonna plant them a little further apart. They can grow quite large, so I'm gonna give them about three to four inches apart. And it's important to keep the soil moist until they start sprouting. While the smaller varieties like French breakfast usually take about 21 days, the larger varieties like this daikon can take 65 plus days. But I promise they're well worth the wait. When it comes to summer crops, the tomato is my absolute favorite, but a close second this year has been the cucumber. And yes, you can start cucumbers, especially somewhere like Zone 10B San Diego, because you want to choose a variety like the Market More that takes about 60 days to maturity. Now, I'm not starting like salad cucumbers or anything like that. I'm starting pickling cucumbers. The idea behind that is that right now at the beginning of August, I could get these in the ground. And at some point in October, I'll start getting cucumbers and then I'll be able to actually produce a bunch of pickles and store them through my hard winter here. And this is a great way to do it because there's not really that much that you want to start at this kind of interval, especially when it comes to fruiting plants. So pickly cucumbers are great and I start them directly in ground at this point of the year. Another perfect crop to start growing in August are snap peas. Snap peas make the perfect addition to any stir fry, but honestly, a lot of them don't even make it inside the house because they also make the perfect garden snack. Two of my favorite varieties to grow are sugar daddy and these really, really fun purple sugar magnolia. Snap peas are pretty vigorous vining plant so they do need proper trellising. What I like to use is this big tall tomato cage that I have or you can always use an arch like this one here. Like carrots and radish, peas don't need much fertilizer so I just went ahead and amended it with a gentle organic one. I'm going to use this little chopstick to divvy out one inch holes about two inches apart all the way around the trellis. Just going to pop a pea in each hole and cover them up. One thing you can do to get a head start on germination is to soak your peas overnight in water. But personally, I just like to keep the soil nice and moist until they sprout. And snap peas usually take about 70 days from seed to harvest. I wanted more texture in my garden this fall, so I'm reaching for this Olesh endive. This endive has a raw, crisp texture that's going to be kind of bitter when it's not cooked. So you can use it uncooked in a salad, or you can cook it down into a soup or a stew, where it's going to mellow out, sweeten up, and get in this more of a nutty flavor. Now this plant is going to mature in about 70 days and it's going to mature into a rosette shape that's about six inches tall to six inches wide with these broad crinkly leaves. Endive is just going to be a little bit more upscale than your regular lettuce, and it doesn't taste good to pests, so it's gonna be an easy one to grow. The flavor also improves 
after a few light frosts. So that will be great as we're headed into these colder months. And I don't need to put it into direct sunlight. So this one can be put in partial shade and you can harvest the whole head or individual leaves. Now, endive is a plant that's sensitive to temperature fluctuations that can cause it to bolt. So it's a good idea to get this one in the ground when your temperatures are still relatively stable, which for us here in the northern climate, that's going to be in between mid to late summer. Now for this one, we just need to plant it about an eighth of an inch deep, and I'm going to do three seeds every six inches or so, and we'll thin that down. Um, because with this one, keeping it consistently moist is really important, keeping that soil moist and damp and cool. But that of course means that the plant is going to be more susceptible to certain fungal diseases and root rot. So we want to make sure that we're giving the endive plants proper spacing so that there's that good airflow. I told you I'd give you 12 plants, but I actually wanna give you just one more because I cannot resist growing flowers. I've really gotten into it over the last maybe season or two of my gardening career, so to speak. And this is what I've never talked about before, which would be the Snapdragon. The variety I have for you is called Tall Maximum Blend. I just personally loved going on these garden tours recently here in San Diego and seeing these beautifully tall snapdragons lining garden pathways. So I wanted to add it to my fall garden. I encourage you to do the same for many different reasons. Number one, it's an absolute bee magnet. You'll see bees kind of nestling their way into the flowers, almost getting a little bit lost in them, which is really cool to see. It blooms more in colder weather. So if you plant it in early August and stream that plant into the fall, you're gonna get beautiful, beautiful blooms because of course the temperatures are getting a little bit lower. And then thirdly, the flowers are actually edible. You can throw them in a salad, you can throw them on a drink, you can just use them as a garnish to pretty up a plate. To me, not something I knew until very recently that you could actually eat Snapdragon flowers. So a beautiful thing that also provides some edible benefit, but a couple interesting tips on germinating these that will help you out a lot. First, this is one of the very few plants that actually wants to be exposed to light as it germinates. I do recommend doing this in a seed starting tray and then transplanting it out just because it's a little bit of a persnickety start. You could press it into the surface of the soil and just sort of depress it slightly but not cover it up. It's also said that freezing the seeds for 48 hours is a really good way to aid germination. So I have not tested that. We'll be doing that with my fall snapdragons. So there are so many things you can still grow in the garden, even in August, even all the way down to the lower growing zones, but we've just given you a quick taste of how to grow these amazing varieties, which you can of course buy, by the way, at our seed company, Botanical Interests. But if you wanna know how to grow them all the way from seed to harvest, well, we did that. We have a whole series here of growing plants all the way from germination to a final harvest. So check those out, good luck in the garden, and keep on growing.